Hey everybody, it's Mimi here again, and I'm coming back at you with another Netflix original series review, or whatever you want to call these things. The show that I did pick up to watch and was pleasantly surprised about was Maniac. Maniac is a 10-part series that stars Jonah Hill and Emma Stone. It's actually a remake to a comedy series about a man who lives his life through his fantasies. But I would have never guessed it was modeled after a comedy had I not read that about this series. Let's just jump into the story and discuss afterwards what else I thought about it. Jonah Hill is Owen Milgram, a seemingly normal working man who is a member of a very wealthy and prominent family. Owen is being prepped to appear in court when we first meet him. That's why we, uh, we have to prep for the unexpected. Can you resume, please? Lawyer questions him about his mental stability to stand trial. As 10 years ago, he was institutionalized for having a psychotic break. Have you ever been hospitalized for mental illness? Yes, 10 years ago. Please. At that time, he believed he was communicating with an indivisible, indivisible, with an invisible twin of his older brother, Jed. He saw hallucinations and had delusions. After spending time at a traditional mental institution, Owen was released and put on regular medications to stop the hallucinations, thus allowing Owen to become a normal member of society. However, at some point, Owen stopped trusting all medications and quit taking his prescriptions. He's been seeing hallucinations again. But you're still using the code. Even though I am technically invisible, you thought you were rid of me. But I have new information. Owen seems to be in a state of constant apathy. Emotionless and still and robotic. However, this may be because he's constantly trying to talk down and minimize his hallucinations internally. It takes all his self-control to appear normal. Even as he loses his job, he shows no emotion. Strangely enough, as soon as he loses his job, a pharmaceutical company actively sets out to acquire Owen as a trial subject for a new program they are testing. Owen accepts. Emma Stone plays Annie Lasberg. Annie Lasberg is introduced as a drug addict. Disaffected, she has trouble keeping down a job. Rents an apartment with several other people. I took your money. You haven't paid rent in three months. I haven't had a job in five months. Well, maybe you should be a little more goal-oriented. It becomes obvious pretty quickly that Annie has extreme anger issues and bipolar disorder. By contrast to Owen, Annie's life seems to be in freefall, as if she's wildly spinning out of control. She is impulsive, quick to get angry, quick to feel remorse, unable to stay in one place for too long. And Annie detests normal life. Annie's drug supply runs out, and she attempts to move on with her life from there. However, the addiction is so strong that it has other plans for her. Unable to stop thinking about it, she seeks out the dealer. Resupplying won't be easy, though, as it just so happens the drug she is addicted to is new and still in its testing phases. It's in the clinical trial phase of being developed as part of a new treatment system. If she ever wants to get high again, she has to find a way to become a test subject for the clinical trials. Annie will go to almost any length to be part of that study. She attempts blackmail and threats. Eventually, she manages to con her way into the trials. Neverdine Pharmaceutical Biotech has been testing a revolutionary treatment that can cure all mental and emotional pain human beings endure. A new process that would change the psychiatric industry forever. Neverdine Pharmaceutical Biotech are pioneering a revolutionary procedure that will unlock the secret mysteries of the mind and replace old-fashioned talk therapy forever. <laughs> Sorry, Sigmund. This treatment process is in its last phases of clinical testing. One more successful final run, and the system will launch all over the world. 
This system is supposed to replace traditional forms of therapy such as institutions and one-on-one -on -one psychiatric therapy sessions. It heightens fantasy and daydreams in order to, to look into the deeper psyche of the patient. It modernizes the system using drugs, a three-step process, and a mega supercomputer with the world's most sophisticated AI. Each step in the process requires a corresponding drug specifically designed for that step in treatment. The drug A for agonia, identifying past traumas that negatively impacted mental well-being the most. The second step with the medication B for behavioral, how does the mind defend itself from being hurt by these traumas? And the last step in the process uses the medication C for confrexia, confrontation and finally acceptance. The process uses the mega supercomputer with the world's most advanced AI to record data and watch over the subjects. There's nothing sinister in anything occurring. The researchers that created the process and the AI all genuinely want to help people. And this is what is so compelling. That is where you can pick up watching the series. There are countless themes, theories, and concepts that the series covers. The humor and wit seems a little out of place at times, and it feels as if there should have been more of it. The plot does bring up some fascinating ideas. Throughout the series, the concept of soulmates is played with time and time again. I have to say this series was a real treat for me to watch. The acting was fantastic. Jonah Hill and Emma Stone are obviously talented actors. They absolutely nailed the characters they were portraying and the supporting cast was perfect. The plot is so intriguing. This is a great series but there are some weak points. The story was moving at a nice pace from episodes 1 through 6. Suddenly someone hit the stupid brakes and almost completely stopped the story train. For some reason, episode 7 seemed so long and t was so slow. I barely made it without skipping ahead. Oh, and friendly warning, 7 has a lot of gore in it. I understand why it was a necessary episode and why they had to slow it down a little bit. But yeah, it, it was hard passing episode 7. Anyway, it's time for my rating. And I'd give it an 8. For a Netflix offering, it, it's pretty good. This deserves an 8. I highly suggest you set some time aside and watch Maniac. Hopefully you won't regret it, but you know, it's totally up to you. That's it for this week. Thank you all for stopping it. I appreciate every second we spend together.